Hello everyone, what is up? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, I'm Maddie. I run EdTech Classroom, the blog, podcast, and of course, YouTube channel. In today's video, I am giving a complete tutorial on how to use Google Jamboard in your classroom. I am a really big fan of Google Jamboard. It is a really great interactive whiteboarding tool that you can use with students. Now, I have made a couple of videos on my channel in the past before about how to use this tool in your classroom, but I wanted to create an updated tutorial video for you guys today. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through how to use this tool as a teacher. And at the end of this video, I'm also going to be sharing some ideas and some templates that you can try out with your students. So without further ado, let's get started. So we are on the Google Jamboard website here, and I got here just by going to jamboard.google.com. Now there's a couple different ways that you can get here, but this is how I usually find myself on the Jamboard website. So right now on my screen here, you'll see that there are a bunch of different files. Now that's because I have used Google Jamboard quite a lot. If you are brand new to Jamboard, you will not see any files here. And to get started creating a new one, all users will want to do is click on the plus sign in the bottom right hand corner. So I'll click on plus to create what's called a new jam. Google Jamboard calls new files jams. So you'll see in the top left hand corner here, it says untitled jam. What we'll want to do first is we'll want to actually give our file a new name. To rename your file, you can click on untitled jam in the top left hand corner and you can begin typing to rename your file. So let's say I want to title mine, my Jamboard activity. And then when I'm ready, I can press OK and this will rename the file. There's another way that you can rename your file while you're in Google Jamboard. And the way that you can do this is you can click on these three dots up here in the top right hand corner and you'll see the first option says rename. You can click on that to rename your file. We'll go over some of these other features in just a bit here, but did want to point that out as we're renaming our file. So now I'll just click in the center and I mentioned this at the beginning of today's video, but Google Jamboard is an interactive whiteboarding tool. So I like to describe this screen that we're looking at here as a blank canvas or a blank whiteboard that you can interact with. On the left hand side, you'll see that that's where we have the majority of the creative features that we're going to be playing around with in today's video. So I'm going to walk you through each of these items on the left hand side one by one. First, we'll start off with this pen tool. If I click on the pen tool, I can click and drag on my trackpad or your mouse and you'll see that lines appear on the screen as I move the um, cursor around. So I've been able to actually draw on this whiteboarding screen here using that pen tool. Now you'll, you might notice that next to this pen tool there is a tiny triangle here. If I click right on the triangle, you'll see that a menu appears with other choices that you can um, select. So for example, this is the pen tool that we just used. There's also a marker tool, there is a highlighter tool, and there is a brush tool. So you might want to play around with these different tools to see what they look like. Each of them have a slightly different um, appearance on the screen. For example, if we click on the marker tool, you also can choose a color. So let's say I choose this blue color. Now when I draw around, you'll see that this is slightly different from this pen tool that we were using. If we click back and we click on the highlighter tool and choose yellow, you'll see that this one is very different. So there are a couple different options again that you can choose from. Below the pen tool, you'll see that we have this eraser tool. You can use the eraser tool to erase any pen marks that you put on the screen. So for example, if I click on the eraser, I can just click and drag just like how I was using for the pen tool and I can erase any of this, um, these pen marks that I put on the screen. So that's how the eraser tool works. Now if you would like to actually clear the entire frame, you want to get rid of all of the pen marks that are on the screen, instead of erasing manually like I was doing just now, you can actually click on this button here up at the top that says clear frame and that will erase everything that is on the frame here. Next, underneath the eraser tool, you'll see that we have the selection tool. 
Anytime you want to move something around in Jamboard, you'll want to click on this selection tool to actually be able to move things. Now this is not going to work if you are wanting to move anything that you've drawn with pen. This is only going to be able to work with all of the tools underneath the selection tool. So you can use this tool to move around sticky notes, images, uh, shapes, text boxes, etc. Um, so I'm going to click on the selection tool and again you can just use this, you'll see the cursor changes so it looks like a cursor and you're able to move things around. Next let's take a look at the sticky note feature. The sticky note feature in Google Jamboard is definitely the most well-known feature in my experience and in my opinion. So I'm a really big fan of using Jamboard to brainstorm different ideas and these sticky notes are a really great way to do that. The way the sticky note feature works is you can just begin typing here so I can say, you know, this is my sticky note and I can press save and the sticky note will be added to Jamboard. You'll see it's in the um, top left hand corner of the frame here. And what I can do is I can keep adding ideas until I'm done and then I can press save. And then when I'm ready to exit out of the sticky notes here, I can click cancel. Now, one more feature I wanna show you is you might notice that there's a couple different color options up at the top here. So I can choose this green shade for example, and I can type and now the sticky note will save in a different color. So I like that there is some flexibility in terms of choosing from different colors. And I'll show you a bit more of how you can use that in your classroom with some different ideas in just a bit. So now you'll see we have these three sticky notes that I've added and now that we are on this selection tool, I can rearrange these sticky notes. I can click and drag to move them wherever I would like for them to go. So you'll see I'm, I just clicked and moved some of these around and when you click on a sticky note, you might also notice that a blue um, outline appears around the sticky note itself. In the top left hand corner of the sticky note, you'll see that there is a circle with this arrow next to it. If I click here, you can um, kind of move around the sticky note so that it's at an angle. In the bottom uh, left hand corner of the sticky note and bottom right hand corner, you'll see that there's another blue circle. And this one you can use to actually resize the sticky note. So much like how you resize you know, shapes or images in Google Slides, you can click on the corner of the sticky note to resize it. Now one more feature you might notice is that there's three dots in the top right hand corner of the sticky. If I click on those three dots, you'll see a drop down menu appears. First we have edit, then we have duplicate, delete, and order. If you click on edit, that allows you to edit the sticky note. If you click on duplicate, that allows you to make a copy. If you click on delete, that allows you to delete the sticky note. And then the last feature you'll see is order. So if you want to change the order of your sticky notes, like let's say you want the, uh, them to go on top of each other, you can rearrange the order here by bringing the sticky note to the front, for example. So if I drag this one over this sticky note here, you'll see that more ideas is on top. Now if I rearrange the order, you'll see that now this is my sticky note is on top of the more ideas sticky note. So that's the way that you can play around with rearranging the order. Now next, underneath the sticky note feature, you'll see that there is an add image button. If you click on add image, you'll see that there are some different ways that you can upload a new image to Google Jamboard. First, you can upload a file directly from your computer. So if you have an image file that's saved to your computer that you would like to upload, you can click on the browse button or you can drag a file to this um, screen here to actually upload a new file. So if you click on browse, you can search through your documents and find the image that you're looking for. You can also add a file or an image by URL through your camera. I personally really like to use Google image search to search for photos. So for example, you might look up puppy and you can upload a picture of a puppy here. You can just click on the one you want and then click on insert and it will upload to Jamboard. So I really like that you have the ability to search Google images to add photos to your Jamboard. This can be really useful if you're looking to plan an activity. Like let's say you want to import an image of the periodic table. I think that that was a suggestion when I typed in P for puppy. Uh, if you wanted to add an image of a periodic table, for example, you could add that to your Jamboard file. 
So I've uploaded an image and much like how you can play around with resizing and moving around the sticky notes, you can do the same thing with the images as well. Now underneath images, you'll see that there's also a shape tool. So if I click on the triangle next to the circle, you'll see that there are different shapes um, that you can choose from. Let's say I wanna choose this arrow feature. I can just click and drag to create my arrow. And once I've created an arrow that I think looks pretty good, I do wanna show you that you can change the color of these shapes. So automatically for me right now, it's just a white arrow with a black outline. If you go up here to the top, there is a border color tool that you can click on to change the, co the color of the border. And there's a paint bucket tool that allows you to change the color of the arrow itself. This works for all of the different shapes and I find it to be a nice feature to be able to somewhat customize the color of your different shapes that you've added. Now you might have noticed Google Jamboard as of right now doesn't offer you know a million different color choices like you find in Google Slides for example, but there are enough choices here for you to be able to add some fun colors to your file. Underneath the shape tool, you'll see that there is a text box tool. The way this works is you can just click and begin typing. So I can say, you know, type, 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 and I can resize this, play around with it, just like how you are resizing some of these other um, options like the shapes and the stickies and the images. So I can play around with creating this text box. So I personally find myself using the sticky note feature far more often than the text box feature, but that is still there available for you if you would like to have some longer text than you might be able to fit inside of a sticky note. Now, much like how there's not too many choices in terms of customizing colors of sticky notes and shapes, there aren't too many choices to customize the what the text actually looks like. So if we go up here to the top, you'll see that right now the style that's selected is normal. You can choose some of these others, but basically what happens is it really just changes the size of the text but doesn't actually change the font. So that's something that as of right now, Google Jamboard doesn't allow you to you know, import or play around with different fonts. Next to that, you'll see that there's text color, same color choices that you can choose from along with text alignment, much like how you can typically you know, align text. If I wanted this to be center aligned, for example, I could click on center, left, et cetera. Now lastly, underneath the text box feature is the laser pointer feature. So if you click on this and you click and drag, you can kind of highlight certain areas. So if you are live teaching using Google Jamboard, this can be really helpful if you want to kind of point something out or specify something, especially if you're giving you know, a lesson. So for example, if I'm teaching about puppies, I could say right here, we're looking at an image of a puppy and students are able to see this if you're projecting your Jamboard Board on the board. So that can be a really useful uh, reason to use the laser pointer feature. Now a few other features I do want to point out in Google Jamboard before we move on to the ideas for how you can use this tool in your classroom. So right up here at the top here, you'll see that we have this, this set background feature. If we click on this, we can change the background. So you'll see that Jamboard has already put a couple of different background choices here for us. Right now, we're just on this default, um, you know, blank white background here, but there's a dots option that you can choose. There's, you know, this blue line that looks like lined paper, this blue graph paper, and some other choices down here as well. Now, an amazing new feature that is new to Jamboard since I last created a complete tutorial video is this option right here, which is to set an image as the background. If you click right here, you can actually select a file or select an image to be the background of this Google Jamboard file. I think that this is a really awesome feature. I know so many teachers were really hoping that Jamboard would come out with this. Um, so I'll show you what this looks like in a bit, but that is how you can actually change the background if you would like to upload your own image as the background to the Jam file. Again, I'll show you an example of that in just a bit. I'm gonna click the X to close out. 
and a few more features to show. So one thing I forgot to point out is one of the most important features, which is the undo feature. When I've done Jamboard with students, many times they've you know accidentally deleted something, and so I really like to point out this undo feature to teachers. So if you look at the top left hand corner, you'll see that there is an undo arrow that will undo the last thing you did, and a redo arrow that will redo um, whatever you just undid. So I really like to use these arrows if I find myself accidentally doing something that I didn't mean to do. So another feature I wanted to point out. Now the last feature that I plan to show is to help you kind of navigate these different frames. So if we look up at the top in the center, you'll see that we can expand this frame bar. When we expand the frame bar, you'll see that we have this small version of what we created in Jamboard so far. So much like how when you're using Google Slides and on the left hand side you see all of the small slide icons or the slide frames on the left hand side when you're in edit mode, this is the same thing but the Jamboard version. So if you want to create a new frame or a new page or a new slide to your Jamboard file, you can click on this add frame button to create a new frame. So now if I click on number two, you'll see that I am here on two out of two and this is a new blank frame for me to work on. To go back to the first one, you can just click on the arrow that says previous frame and then the forward arrow to go to the next frame. So now to expand the frame bar again, if you'd like to delete a frame, you can click on the three dots in the top right hand corner. You can click duplicate if you would like, or again, if you'd like to delete, you can just click delete. So that is how you can play around with adding new frames, duplicating frames, deleting frames. And then when you're ready to share the file directly with students, just like how you share files um, in Google Docs, Google Slides, Sheets, etc., you can click on this share option and share the file to, um, to your students directly or to a collaborator, let's say a co-teacher. And if you'd like to actually export your file, you can download it as a PDF. This will make every frame save as a new page in the PDF. You can save one specific frame as an image. So this would save just this frame as an image. If I wanted to save another frame, I would need to go to that frame and then click this button again. You can also remove this. If you'd like to make a copy of your file, you can do that as well. So that was a tutorial on how to actually use Jamboard, how to use all these different features. Now let's take a look at some examples for how you can use this tool in your classroom. The first idea that I want to show is how to use Jamboard in morning meeting. I personally am a really big fan of introducing tech tools to students using low stakes activities. So instead of introducing Jamboard to students for assessment when they've never used this tool before, I really like the idea of incorporating a tech tool into a low stakes time like morning meeting, for example. So right now we're looking at an example of a morning meeting share prompt that I put together. So in the center of the screen here, it says, what do you hope will happen today? And essentially what I've done for this activity is each student has their own sticky note that's almost like a parking spot for them to be able to put their ideas. So just like how you can collaborate on docs and slides, students can actually edit this link here if you share it with them. So the way this works is a student, let's say their number that they're assigned is number eight, they can double click here and they can delete eight and they can type in their response to the share prompt. So if you are incorporating share, morning shares into your morning meeting, this can be a really great example for how you can use Jamboard to actually do this. So here's one example here. It says, what do you hope will happen today? And we have another one here that says news and announcements. What do you want to share with the class? Same concept. Each student has a you know, parking spot or a sticky note that they can edit. And then the last one here is mistakes are proof that you are trying. What does this quote mean to you? So I really like, again, the idea of using Jamboard during morning meeting and specifically during morning shares. I will have this linked in the video description in case you would like to use this file for free with your students. Another great idea for using Google Jamboard in your classroom is to create classroom agreements. So at the beginning of the school year, if you're creating classroom agreements or setting expectations, Jamboard can be a great place for students to have a say and to brainstorm their ideas. 
So this is a similar concept to the morning shares activity where each student has their own sticky note and they can double click and add their own ideas. Now, one thing that you might notice in looking at this example here, as well as the previous examples, is that the font here looks a lot different than the font that is actually set for Google Jamboard um, as, the, as the default font. So I have actually created an image that says classroom agreements in the top left here and the text underneath it, as well as the icon in the bottom right hand corner. I created that in Google Slides and I saved it as an image and then uploaded that as that image as the background to this Jamboard file here. So you'll see I can't actually move around this classroom agreements text and that's because that is an image that is set to the background. So earlier when I was walking you through how to use Jamboard, I mentioned that you click, can click on the set background feature and you can click on image to select an image from your computer. That's what I did for this background here. I just uploaded this image to the background and now it's been set so that it looks like this. So that's another example for how you can use Jamboard with your students. Again, implementing classroom agreements. One more fun example that I want to share for how you can use Google Jamboard with students is you can play a fun game. Um, so oftentimes, again, when I like to introduce new tech tools to students, I like to have it in this fun, low stakes environment where students can really play around with how these tools work. So this is an example of a this or that activity. And the way it works is students have a number or if you wanted, you could type their name in each sticky and based off which one they prefer, apples or bananas, they can click and drag their number to the specific location. So let's say number eight prefers apples. They can click and drag their sticky note to the apple side of the screen. Um, so this is a fun way that you can, um, you know, help students learn how to play around with Jamboard in this fun environment. This is also another activity that you could try out with students during morning meeting. So I just shared a few different examples for how you can use Google Jamboard in your classroom. If you're looking to dive even deeper, I will have a playlist linked at the end of today's video that has all of my Google Jamboard tutorial videos and tips there for you to be able to watch through. And if you like the templates that I shared in this video, be sure to click on the description in this video and grab the links so that you can have your own free copies of these templates. Thank you so much for watching today's video all about how to use Google Jamboard in your classroom. If you liked this video, be sure to give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you're not already, and I'll see you back here soon. Bye friends.